Hi, everybody. It's Eric Murray from TheSugarHuddle.com. Well, you know, the Bears had come into the game 6-3, and three, leading the NFC North, but didn't have a single win against a winning team all year long, and so a lot of people looked at them as a pretty kind of suspect or overrated team. Not me necessarily, but, you know, a number of people weren't really sure what to think of this team. Of course, you know, three losses, their defense had gotten torched. They lost that shootout against the Patriots at Soldier Field a while back. Lost to the Dolphins in that overtime thriller. And, of course, they blew that week one game against the Packers. So, you know, they were looking for a statement win. You know, young football team. They don't have a starter over 30. Actually, I don't think they have a starter over 28 uh, any on any unit of their football team, offensively or defensively. You know, they've got a young quarterback, Mitch Trubisky, you know, rookie head coach, and, and Matt Nagy, and they're both trying to – you know, establish themselves and, and try to improve themselves and a team that's obviously vastly improving, but you got to get those, you know, quote unquote statement wins in this league to, to show that you're a real contender and not a pretender. And obviously getting a win on Sunday night would give them an opportunity to go ahead by a couple of games in the division and improve to seven and three. So that's obviously what Chicago is looking for. Lots of energy coming out for this one. You know, they kick an early field goal, I mean, Khalil Mack, he does his thing, obviously a tremendous trade that's paid dividends. He forces a, an early fumble uh, from Dalvin Cook on Minnesota's first drive when they were right around the 15-yard line just inside the red zone, trying to possibly go ahead or at least tie it. And then from there, eventually, Chicago, they go on a long scoring drive, actually go for two as well uh, to go up 11 nothing. Um, Trubisky found Anthony Miller for 18 yards on a nice touchdown. And they end up kicking a field goal late in the half and go up 14-0. And, and they just were really in total control, dominating the game. You know, Kirk Cousins really struggled, had less than 100 passing yards. Uh, picked off late in the half as they were driving. Adrian Amos picked it. Adrian Amos, I should say, picked him off inside the 10-yard line. So, you know, Minnesota it was just one of those things where they couldn't get anything going. The running game, the entire game, for that matter, uh, ended up with 14, just 14 rushing attempts for 22 yards. Cousins ended up getting picked off twice. And on the other side of it, their run defense ended up allowing 148 rushing yards on the night. So for Chicago, or for Minnesota, I should say, really kind of the opposite of what they are trying to accomplish with Mike Zimmer and company to, to be a team that, you know, tries to get back to the NFC Championship game and beyond. That's not the winning formula you want when your quarterback's making mistakes you know, your running game's fumbling it away, you're leaving points on the board, and then your defense is not playing up to its standards, or at least its previous standards from last year. Of course, this Vikings defense have played real well the last couple of weeks. And this week, I mean, I can't say they took a total step back, but they definitely weren't on the weren't on their game like they had been the previous couple of weeks. Let's just put it that way. So, anyways, they lost the battle up front. They did force Mitch Trubisky into a couple mistakes, a couple of key interceptions, both by Anthony Harris. But Trubisky, you know, one of the things Chris Collinsworth said in the telecast is that Trubisky makes the wow plays, and he makes the wow plays. Wow as in, you know, he's he's a great runner, very athletic, and can also make some really nice throws, really impress you. And then he turns around and makes a wow play, like, you know, why did he make that throw or, or whatever the case may be. But even with that being said, Trubisky still made enough of the good wow plays uh, had I think it was 165 passing yards and a touchdown, and that touchdown to Miller, of course, had 10 carries, 43 yards, had some real nice runs throughout the game. And anyhow, really, it was one of those games kind of similar to Week One's loss against the Packers, where the only thing that could really beat the Bears was themselves, because you know the Packers game they started making some mistakes, let the Packers get right back in it, and then Aaron Rodgers went completely off in the fourth quarter, and they were able to steal that win from. Uh, Chicago at Lambeau but this time around you know Chicago at home they fumbled away like or I'm sorry Trubisky throws a pick uh, on a you know no receiver around very suspect throw don't know what he's thinking Minnesota is able to return it well into Chicago territory but Chicago's defense to their credit they force field goal and then the very next drive I, I believe it was Tariq Cohen who fumbled it away in his own territory and again, credit to the Chicago defense. They they held Minnesota a field goal, but it's fourteen six game. All of a sudden, it got very very interesting at the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, when it really shouldn't have. And 
you know, from there, both sides were able to kind of trade scores, and, and Chicago was able to do enough to seal it. They they end up kicking a, a long Daniel or uh, uh, Cody Parkey field goal, I should say. Cody Parkey, of course, missed four kicks last week. All of them hit off the goalpost, which, you know, when have you ever seen four of them by one carry hit off the goalpost, two extra points and, and two field goals? And obviously everybody was kind of on the edge of their seat every time he went out to kick, but he made all his kicks this time around, including that one late in the game, make a 25-14 game. can't remember exactly how long it was in length. I want to say it was somewhere in the 47-yard range. I mean, it was a lengthy kick. They almost thought about going for it. It was like fourth and fourth and five or something like that. So they were going to go for it. But uh, nonetheless, Matt Nagy did the smart thing, and he said, eh, you know what, let's just try to kick it and see what happens. Minnesota ends up scoring late again, but they can't get the onside kick. But at any rate, you know, it was a really impressive win for Chicago. Like I said, I mean, they, they similar to that Green Bay loss, the only thing that could really beat them was themselves. And they ultimately proved that they weren't going to beat themselves this time out. And, you know, that, that defense between Mack and, and Hicks, those two guys, Keem Hicks, you know, have just been unbelievable and obviously a big reason why Kirk Cousins struggled all night long because he was only sacked twice, but it felt like he was sacked six or seven times because he, he got hit so much, got pressured so much, and like I said, the running game was completely non-existent, completely canceled out in this one. So, you know, overall, it was a really, really nice effort for the Bears, and, and even with some of those mistakes and even with some of those missed opportunities, they still were in complete control of this one and got a really, really important win you know, of course, they're going to be one of the Thanksgiving games this upcoming Thursday when they play at Detroit for the early game, the, the, usually about noon start time. And, you know, Detroit's definitely not going to let them off the hook, and that's definitely going to be a, a tough game for the Bears. But, I mean, Chicago could quickly be an 8-3 and three football team and, and really leaving the rest of the NFC North in their dust and all of a sudden becoming a real true contender in the NFC and, and really could be an interesting team in, in January because they have a championship level defense. You know, it's kind of similar in certain ways to you think about the Jaguars last year where really it kind of came down to, okay, they got the championship defense. They can run the ball a lot of weeks, but do they have the right quarterback? And I think Trubisky is way ahead of where Bortles was early in his career and, and way ahead of, you know, where B Bortles is now five years into his career. But obviously that's going to continue to be a question going forward. But Trubisky's done some nice things. If, if he can be a little bit more consistent, not make as many head-scratching throws, I think he'll be fine, and I think he can do enough to really get this team deep in the playoffs. And obviously we're still a long ways off from that, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, championship-level defense. And Matt Nagy, again, very, very impressive. You know, He's an innovative play caller, part of the Andy Reid coaching tree, which is very attractive. And you know, again, he, he did some nice things the way he was able to kind of mix up the playbook and, and some of the interesting calls he made. And overall, you know, you got to hand it to the Bears. They they finally get that, that first win against a winning team. They still have some challenges coming up in the near future, and, and I, I think they're going to be ready for it. And again, Khalil Mack, you know, we say it over and over again how the Raiders screwed themselves on the trade, and it just seems that every single week he does something new to really just blow us away, just always forcing a fumble or getting a sack. And Akeem Hicks, you know, if it wasn't for Khalil Mack, he'd easily be the best defensive player on the team and, you know, was the best guy last year for them and having another great year. So those two guys really form a nice foundation. And the defensive backs, Eddie Jackson, he had the other interception. It was actually a pick six, and that was a big, you know, game-changing moment as well in this game. But nice win for them. As for Minnesota, they have to play Green Bay, uh, the Sunday night coming up so you know all of a sudden that's a big rematch game and, and suddenly that could be I don't want to say it's a playoff elimination for the Vikings because remember they're 5-4-1 and one, but it definitely is for Green Bay it's 4-5-1 and one, so it's a it's huge huge game for both teams maybe they'll tie again that'd be fun but the Vikings you know again Kirk Cousins has struggled in some of these big games and the defense hasn't been showing up like it did last year in most games so we'll see but Minnesota they're they're in a little bit of trouble now and obviously they'll be in a lot of trouble if they lose to the Packers. We'll see how it goes. But anyways, please go to sugarhuddle.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and please like my Facebook page, The Sugar Huddle, uh, for more. Thanks.